Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of the Introduction to Corn Shell. Today, I wanted to go over how we can save output from a Unix command or a Corn Shell command. Now, normally when you run a command, the output goes to the screen. However, if you want to save the output to a file, you can do that. Why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes when you run commands, like the Unix commands, Corn Shell scripts, the output is very large and it fills more than one screen so you can't look at it quick enough. Also, sometimes you may step away from your computer while a command is running and the output may go off the screen. Also, you may want to save the output so that you have a snapshot of how your system looks at that particular point in time that you can use to compare at different points of time. For example, you may do a snapshot of how large each file system is and compare it to snapshots taken at different times. Therefore, you can estimate the growth of how much space your files are taking up over time. That way you can adequately plan for your capacity growth. So Unix commands and corn shell commands produce two types of output. The first type is this. It is the output you normally expect to see. You run a command, and if the command goes well, it produces output. However, if you run a command and it can't produce output, it's going to produce an error. So normal output is output type 1, and error output is output type 2. So to save normal output, we do something like this. We enter the name of our command with all the flags and values and parameters just as we'd like them. Then afterward, we do this. We say we want to save the normal output, which is output type 1, and we want to put it in a file. So in this case, we're just going to say ex1.txt. And you notice, this is how you do it. We're saying normal output, output type 1, and we're taking an arrow and we're pointing it at this file. Therefore, we're saying any normal output from this command gets put into this file. And as you can see, the arrow points at that file. So it didn't produce output on the screen. And if we look at the file, we can see that the output that should have gone to the screen instead went to the file. And this is just the cat command. It lists the contents of a file. That command is a Unix command. One thing I want to note here, this format right here will overwrite the contents of whatever is in here. So if you had something important in here, it's gone. So to do the append, you put a double arrow that points to this file. This says run this command, take the normal output, not the error output, and append it to the end of this file. Error output would still go to this screen right here. So as you can see, once again nothing got printed to the screen, and if we look at the contents of the file, you can see it now has results of two runnings. Now, to save error output, you would do something like this. Well, error output of this command goes to the screen. So if you want to save it, you type in your command. You say we want to save error output, which is output type 2. And we're going to point it, the output from here, in this ex2.txt. As you can see, this time, the error output did not get put onto the screen. And if we look at the contents of that file, you can see that the result of this command, which should have gone to the command line normally, instead got put into this file. And once again, this single arrow that points to the file means overwrite. So whatever was in here before this command was run is now gone. If you want to append, you use a double arrow. 
And what I want to show you now is that you don't have to save both outputs. So this command right here, it will produce normal output because there are files that start with the word more in this directory, but there's no file that starts that is equal to the word blah. Therefore, this will produce regular output, output type 1. This will produce error output, output type 2. And we're only saving the regular output. So therefore, we should not see the results from this command, but we should see the results from this. And as you can see, it did produce the error to the screen, and it did save the results to the file. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to show you is that you can save the output of normal output to one file and the error output to another file. And you notice I didn't put any spaces here between the, the arrow and the file name. That's OK. You don't have to have it, or you can have it. However, you do have to have the number right next to the arrow. Otherwise, the Unix operating system will think that the 1 goes with this, that it's just another argument that goes to the ls. So when we run this, no output should go to the screen, and it doesn't. And the results were saved to this file, and the error output was saved to this file. Another thing, if you want to save both the error output and the regular output to the same file, this is how you would do it. You have your command, whether it's a Unix command or a Cornell command, and you say, save the output to a file. In this case, it's in append because we have the double arrows. And then you say, my error output, I want to send it to the same place that I'm sending the regular output. This and sign right here means address of 1. So and 1 means address of 1. So what you're doing is you're saying, take 2 and do the same exact thing that you're doing with 1. And I do realize this is a single arrow. However, it will append because what we're saying here is do the same exact thing for error output that you're doing for regular output. So let's run this. No output goes to screen. And let's look at the contents of ex1.txt. And as you can see, the error output is here. And, and the regular output is also here. So it saved both to the same file. And as you can see, even though it said 2 greater than ampersand 1, which was a single arrow, it did not overwrite. It did, in fact, append because the 1 was greater than greater than file name. Another thing I want to show you is that this one here is optional. When you do not put in a number before the arrow signs, Unix automatically assumes that you are talking about standard output. So it knows that you want standard output from this command to be appended to this file right here. And it also knows that you want to take error output and do the same exact thing that you did with standard output. Now, the reason why I kept putting the 1 in front is it's easy to explain this right here when you see the 1 in front.